Okay, welcome to this uh, uh, scribble class on molecular structures, uh, bonding, Vesper, all of those kind of concepts we'll talk about today. Our main thing is to talk more about uh, structures of uh, molecules and how they might impact the properties of those molecules. You notice why I've got video, so yep, I'm bald. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I'll help through the video. I'll be able to show you some molecular structures and you might get a better idea of what those uh, structures look like. Okay, so um, one of the things that uh, is difficult with any textbook or any kind of computer kind of thing is getting things in three dimensions. And it turns out the molecules, uh, if I can see them in three dimensions, helps me identify what they'll look like. And from that, I can d uh, also deduce some properties of those. So we've looked at things in two dimensions, like this molecule down here. doesn't look too exciting. Uh, let me get the same molecule here. Here it is in three dimensions. And it gives you a little bit better idea of maybe what that molecule looks like. We'll, we'll see it again here in a second. Okay, so uh, the kinds of structures that um, we've seen so far, you, we've all seen chemical formulas like this. Uh, you've probably noticed um, some of the instructors drawing water like this. It's funny that it's bent. We'll talk about that in a second. And here's sort of a 3D model. Uh, I, I have these models. I guess here's some other models here too that I have uh, that uh, sort of show how the atoms are, are arranged to form uh, a structure. So we've seen that. Um, 3D uh, helps us, like I said, give us some more properties. So, first off, just, just a little thing to uh, show you a molecular structure and may, maybe why it is the way it is. Um, the question is, why is water bent? So here I have a, a molecule of water, H2O. So if I look below, I see it as a bent molecule. I see this 3D image also. I guess it's not really 3D. Here's my water right over here. You can see it. That's, I don't know if that's 3D. Maybe you should put on 3D glasses. You can see it 3D. Anyway, that's, that's uh, our water. But why do I draw water this way, and why do I not draw water that way? Uh, that, that's a good question. Using a three-dimensional idea is what will help us identify why water is, is drawn as bent and why it's not drawn as straight. So the model or the theory that someone came up with is something called the Vesper theory, where the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. And it provides a way to explain the shape of the molecule and then from that other properties. Of course, there'd be other theories, and these are just theories, uh, but they, help us, they do help us explain things. For example, in water, Vesper theory gives us a great reason why water is bent and not straight. So the theory basically says that electron pairs want to stay as far away from each other as possible. So whether I have non-bonding electrons, we'll see those in a second, or whether I have bonding electrons and an atom, um, the electrons try and stay as far away from each other as possible. So let's take a look at, at four or five examples. Here's one where I have a linear molecule. This is a molecule of carbon dioxide. I've taken the liberty of putting all the electrons in. So carbon's here in red, and then all the red electrons are theirs, uh, is carbons. And then oxygen here, usually it's red, but uh, just here with the color coordination, I made it green. So oxygen's green, and so oxygen has six electrons. Notice in this case here, I have a double bond between um, the carbon and between the oxygen. So this is my um, uh, Lewis structure. This is how I could draw it with a Lewis structure. Uh, if I wanted to replace those those bonding electrons with lines, I could go something like this, a C in the middle, double bond oxygen there, double bond oxygen over there. Now, why is it linear? Um, right now I've s sort of shown it as linear. But let's sort of maybe draw it with these molecules over here. Uh, here's a carbon. Let me draw it over here a little bit. And here's a bonding um, 
let's see, bonding electrons there to this oxygen, another bonding electrons to this other oxygen. Um, there's actually two bonding pairs, so maybe I'll draw another line there, just to indicate the double bonds. But notice that here, there are some lone pairs of electrons. So in each one of these, like this one would have some lone pairs, and this one would have lone pairs, this one over here would have lone pairs and lone pairs as well. Now, each of these electrons, whether they be the double bonds or these lone pair of electrons, let me just sort of turn it a little bit, um, each of those would want to stay, according to Vesper, as far away from each other as possible. And so here I'm just angling them a little bit to try and sort of indicate that they would try and stay as far away from each other as possible so that um, these electrons are as far away from those electrons and as far away from those as possible. And when they do that, here's a, a model that I made up of carbon dioxide. Hopefully you can see that. In the middle here would be the carbon atom. And then out here, this would be the oxygen, oxygen. And then these blue things represent the um, non-bonding or the lone pairs of electrons, these guys. And notice that they're trying to stay as far, these guys are trying to stay as far away from this and this as possible. And so the shape that it makes is something called a linear shape. So carbon dioxide is a linear molecule. Let's try another one. Here's one down below. This one's called a trigonal planar. Tri meaning three. Uh, boron's an interesting molecule that uh, rather than going for eight, it likes to go for six. There's the odd exception, but not too many. I've drawn boron uh, trihydride down here. So this would be boron, and I draw hydrogen on each side like that. That would be sort of a Lewis structure. If I wanted to put these guys in there, I could go like this and like this, and like this, and like that. And so these um, bonding electrons here are trying to stay as far apart from each other as possible. And here's an example of that too, sort of a 3D. Notice again that it's still linear, like you can see that in a line. So it's still linear, but it's trigonal. So it's like a triangle. I don't know if a triangle. I guess if you joined the points, it would be. But these bonding electrons are trying to stay as far apart as possible. Okay, let's, those, so those are two types of shapes so far with Vesper. Let's look at a couple more. Another one's a tetrahedral. This is the one that we saw here on this page. Notice how not exciting that one is. But when I go to this one, here now I've got carbon in the middle and four hydrogens surrounding. Here's the bonding electrons. Okay, so when we're trying to draw it here with this molecule, I guess I can try and make sort of some kind of a, a um, three-dimensional drawing. But it's, it, it's pretty tough. But keep in mind what these hydrogens are trying to do, or specifically the uh, bonding pairs of electrons, they're trying to stay as far away from each other as possible. Here is what it looks more like in three-dimensional. Each of these white sort of things, atoms, are, are hydrogens, and the middle thing would be the carbon. So notice that they're trying to stay as far apart as pot possible. So here when I have four bonding electrons, and they're trying to stay as far apart as possible, I call that structure a tetrahedral. Okay, let's look at the one right down below, uh, trigonal pyramidal. Let's see what that sort of thing looks like. It's NH3, and so I'd have a nitrogen in the middle. Nitrogen's got five electrons. There's one, two, three, four, five electrons. And then uh, each hydrogen sort of slips in to one of those ones there. So that's what ammonia looks like. It's got three hydrogens. And it's got, notice, a, a, a lone pair of electrons that aren't bonded to anything. If I'm going to draw that um, in uh, here with my little stick models, it would look something like this. 
something like that, and there'd be this lone pair of electrons on top. Notice it's still sort of this tetrahedral kind of structure, but this lone pair of electrons up here, usually we don't, we don't draw that in. But the structure itself is still trigonal, so it's still three. But what, uh, where's my picture of that one? This one right here. So here's my picture of that one, where these three white guys on the bottom are the uh, hydrogens, and then this blue guy is the lone pair of electrons. So usually we don't write those in in a structure, but it's useful for us when we're looking at um, what this structure would actually look like. So ammonia is, it's sort of like a tetrahedral, but because this is a lone pair of electrons, we call it trigonal because of the three, and it's also pyramidal because those aren't linear like we saw the boron trihydride. Um, they're more like a pyramid. And so, and being a pyramid versus being linear has an effect on the properties of that molecule. Okay, one last one to show you, and then uh, we'll uh, look at some other uh, forces or some of the implications of these Vesper uh, structures. Okay, last one is water. You'd think water would be the simplest thing. Eh? Anyway, water, we know, uh, looks like this. So why is it bent, like we asked originally? Well, I ha here I have my oxygen molecule. Here I've got a hydrogen, another hydrogen. And I also have lone pairs of electrons. These don't look that great of lone pair of electrons, but there's lone pair of electrons there. Let me draw the Lewis structure again. So it would be uh, oxygen, and oxygen has six electrons surrounding it, and then hydrogen would have one. Okay, so it's these lone pairs of electrons that affect the shape of water. So here's my picture of water. In the middle, or my model of water, in the middle is my oxygen atom. These green guys are supposed to be hydrogens, okay? So the green guys are hydrogens, and these blue guys, like before, are lone pairs of electrons. So all these electrons, remember, are trying to stay as far away from each other as possible. Now these lone pair of electrons, typically we don't see those, so take a look at what water looks like. See how it's a bent, a bent molecule? So looking at this valence shell electron pair repulsion theory helps us take a look at some models like this and be able to tell or uh, theorize anyway why water would be a bent molecule and why it would not be linear. And it's because these bonding electrons are trying to stay as far apart from these other lone pair of electrons as po possible. So the total shape is sort of tetrahedral but if we take away those lone pair of electrons and don't count them, the molecule of water itself is bent. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what uh, the Vesper theory is about and how it helps us determine what kind of shapes. And we'll look at some properties in the next ScribbleCast um, of different molecules.